Hi folks, I'm Anthony with Two Guys in a Ride. Today Rob and I are here at the Minneapolis Boat Show and we, we are here with Matt and we're here at Skeeter Boats. And I, I'll tell you what, the, the fishing Matt in, in the last decade or a little bit longer than me that, but it's gone, it's changed so much. It's unbelievable. You can watch it change during this show. The, uh, and we're going to show you a boat here that Matt's got behind us. And you're going to understand just how much things have changed in, in, in that time, at least from when I started fishing. Unreal. It's, and you, you could not say it any better. Skeeter is celebrating its 75th anniversary this year. It's unbelievable to me that everything that has changed in the last decade has changed more than it did the previous 65 years. 65 years, it was, you know, we all made a, yeah. yeah, we all made a boat, right? Skeeter has always had patented designs, whether it was their sponsons, their transoms, right? They've always done their own deal, but what's evolved is everything that's happening inside these boats now with the electronics, the, the batteries, the shallow water anchors, the outboards, everything that's happening has to be engineered around. And that's what I'm probably most excited about is that Skeeter has listened to anglers and absolutely built boats around what anglers not, not want, require. It's the anglers that require these things, and skeeters answer those requirements. In some ways, the anglers drive the industry, right? What, what they do, what they need. Now, and and you know what you're talking about, Matt. You were angler of the year. <laughs> I, you know, I'm fortunate enough. I fished the Champions Tour, Classic Bass Champions Tour. I was fortunate enough to be the 2022 angler of the year, fishing out of the Skeeter FXR 21. Well, congratulations. <laughs> that's that's no small accomplishment. Thank you. Thank so it you. is the FXR21 that we're looking at today, yes. but the Skeeter boats are, are have the same basic uh, under, under the body workings, let's just call it, right? From, from our client, so if you look at it, let's use uh, a GMC, yep. right? GMC has their SLT edition, which yep. is an amazing truck. Then they'll throw bells and whistles at it, kind of do some fancy yep. and call it the Denali. For us, we take our ZXR, Skeeter ZXR is our SLT package. Okay. Phenomenal. But then we'll throw some more bells and whistles and things at it. It becomes our Skeeter FXR. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's, it's fascinating in, in as far as boating history goes, you know, how much you've had to change. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about, because you have to understand from a manufacturing standpoint, if you're going to change X, you well, got to let, change. Let's, let's just take the batteries for example. Yeah. Well, hey, let's you, start why you would, let's actually start at let, let's start at point A. Okay. Right. So in a fishing boat, this is the captain's quarters. Right. Yep. This is where the work gets done. In a fishing boat, has been for a hundred years. It didn't matter if it was a rowboat. If you looked at it. The furthest seat back left the front. That was the captain's quarters. You went up to the front for your casting room. Now, if you were a guide, you were always in the back of the boat working the oars or working the motor or doing whatever. But the guest, the client, the paying guest was up here. Was up here. So we're going to call this the captain's quarters. And what's happened in the last decade is the revolution in electronics. Yeah, absolutely. Electronics have gone from being a depth finder. Mm -hmm. They've been called fish finders for years, but they've never been fish finders. They were always depth finders. Well, now they're fish finders. Now they're more than a fish finder. It's tracking your bait, watching the fish interactively follow the bait, trigger the bait, turn from the bait, knowing if you're doing it right or doing it wrong. What's happened is, is the days of somebody having a simple graph yep. in the front of the boat where they could just watch depth yep. and a simple graph in the rear of the boat where they could just watch depth. Mapping technology took off first, right? So now you wanted a screen that was going to do your sonar and your mapping. Map. Yep. So you saw 
screen size follows suit so that you could see that image right better. it'd be big enough right then came along mega side imaging mega side imaging took that down facing transducer and split it out to the sides yep. now i knew what was happening all the way around me yep to the sides and underneath me then came along mega 360 mega 360 took that same side imaging but it kept it real time and it did basically a radar right it was 360 degrees all the way around the boat that's a lot of info to try and pack into one screen. Yep. So the evolution became, not only am I getting one big screen, now I need two big screens. Heck, I might want three big screens. In order for us to do that, we had to change spacing, space that was available, right? Okay. So our boat, this FXR right here, comes with these two Helix 12s, right? Okay. The beauty of Skeeter is we have listened to the anglers and followed this transition to the technological angler by following Humminbird, Minn Kota, Raptor, right? Johnson Outdoors yep. and Lake Master Chips. The reason we do that is it's a one boat network. This entire platform is networked from the front to the rear as we're going to go through. But right here in the captain's quarter, let's say I wanted to do Mega 360, okay. Mega Live, Mega Down Imaging, Side Imaging, and Mapping. I can split these 12-inch screens half, thirds, quarters, whatever I need okay. to do. But I've got 12 inches of to screen on each one. To and do we it. can see you're sitting up on that step looking down. It's Absolutely. even smaller. And what do you have over your shoulder? The sun. The sun. Right? So I've got to be able to have maybe a different angle. Or So we have not only adapted by including the graphs, but let's custom build a mount that A, displays these graphs, but B, is capable of carrying these graphs. We're running high speed in big water. Yeah. Right? That's a lot of weight flexing. The mount built by Skeeters through, through bolted inside here. There's lots of aftermarket companies, but there's simply screws in a fiberglass. Okay. This these, is bolted through. These are bolted through so as not going factory. anywhere. This mount is bomb proof. Right? So that's the beauty of it is we have adapted not only to what we needed to do but our engineering to suit wow all right so talk about then the integration then with the trolling motor. yeah so the boat comes standard with a 36 volt mincota ultrax trolling motor which is the eye pilot the tracking the depths okay right it's also got the spot lock which was the game changer it's a gps anchor right i hit the button it stays in that spot. position, no matter how hard the wind's blowing or currents or whatever, it keeps me on. It's somebody running the trolling motor without running right. the trolling motor. It keeps me hands-free and really foot-free. Nice. The boat comes standard with a mega side imaging transducer built right into it. Oh, really? Yep. So where Mega 360 oh, and I Mega like Live that. come into it is they are their own transducers. Okay. When we build this boat, we prepare for anything to be added to the boat. The beauty of the one boat network is there's no more running wires. There's no more this, and I got to add this box, and you simply put the transducer on, and I'll show you. Humminbird and Minn Kota have what's called a five-port box. Like an Ethernet box? Yes, yeah, exactly. And you plug so it in. the wires are pre-run, and you can just... Oh, yeah, man. It's, it's literally as simple as back in the day, buying a DVD player and adding it to your TV. Right. So let me show you where that's at. So as we work our way to your driver, right? right? Here. So now we have built in, right? I've got a large screen graph here. Now, from here, when I'm in transit, I'll normally split my screen, have sonar and mapping. 
Okay. Right? But when I'm fishing, whoever's standing back here, instead of them having to ask you what's happening up there, they can see all that information right here on this screen. Because it's all networked. It's all networked together. Wow. And if you look underneath that console, right behind the standard hot foot, you will see how we do it. It's that five port box. And if you notice, there's three empty spots right now on that box. You can add Mega Live and Mega 360, and it's all right there waiting for you. Wow. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting to be talk, talking about networking on boats. On boats. It's, you but, know, if it's, somebody, if someone had told you 10 years ago, you'd be talking about networking and, and uh, right, connecting, you know, uh, 12 inch screens together and, and it, running three huge screens. And what's crazy about it is if you look at the, the biggest names in this sport right now, not only are they running three screens, some of them have five screens yeah. they make screens 15 inches or bigger right right they'll have two of those it's you've got to be prepared for what anybody wants to, to add to it but no to and, and you're absolutely right you would have said i don't believe you i mean that's not where you're, you're used to these little depth finders but what always happens let's take the world of tvs right there's a reason that you always went to somebody else's house to watch the Super Bowl. It was always your buddy that had the biggest screen right. TV, right? You could have watched on your own 32 inch TV, but if he had a 60 inch, it was a whole lot nicer, Yes. right? It's no different in the fishing world. Nobody ever said, God, I wish I bought a smaller screen. Nobody's ever <laughs> said those words. No. <laughs> so it's the, what's happened is, is companies like Humminbird and Minn Kota have evolved to what the fishermen are asking for. The fishermen have dictated to us what they are wanting. Skeeter has redesigned their platforms. The engineering, people walk into these shows and they're like, oh, you didn't change anything? Everything. 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 Except, except for maybe the exterior look. Yeah, we may still have some colors, but everything changes. Everything. And it's all built around what we're talking about. If I'm running three to five screens, yep. can I still do that from that standard starting battery that I've always done? No. Probably not. 36 volt trolling motors are standard now. Used to be 24 volt. 36 volt requires three batteries, right? So I've already moved from three batteries to four batteries. But if I'm running three big screens, or four big screens or five big screens, maybe I'm adding a dedicated battery just for electronics. We've had to re-engineer the entire transoms. Right? Now. So this whole part had to be re-engineered to accommodate the batteries. The batteries. Okay. That was literally, but nothing, we couldn't get rid of anything else. You still have your pump outs. You still have your live wells. You still have everything else. Okay. So it's not like you got to get rid of that stuff. So we had to change the spacing. We had to change that. There's a lot of weight involved there. You don't just slip oh, yeah. an extra 200 pounds in the rear of a boat and expect it to ride right, right? Right. So the entire, we're fortunate enough to have, I think the best engineers in the boating industry that literally will test everything from with a five pound sandbag to a 250 pound sandbag and then move it four inch in increments to see how the boat changes in, in ride and okay. performance, right? And they're constantly evolving. Okay. If you look at, let's just use this transom while we're standing yep. here. Five years ago, you walked around this show, you might see one shallow water anchor in this entire building. Now, if you look at our boats, they come standard with shallow water anchors. We run them in Coda Raptors because they're now included in the one boat network. Right. I can run them from my screen one or, yeah. But we have to have hydraulic pumps. Well, now we've added even more oh, things, right. right? So that engineering comes into so, play. So we, we were talking earlier, so, and then it gets a little, even a little more complicated when, 
So you've added all that weight. You're trying to figure out how to, how to compensate for it. And then they come out with lithium batteries. And then they throw in. And then the weight. Right about the time you right. figure out how to make it for an extra 300 pounds in the rear, lithium comes along in the boating world and takes 278 pounds out of it, right? I would venture to say in the engineering department of the Skeeter, that's a longer coffee break that day. It's You know what? Going it's <laughs> I think, here, here's what I'll tell you that, that impresses me the most about Skeeter boats, right? One, they've been building boats for 75 years, longest in, in this building, right? In a fiberglass boat, yeah. they're, the, they're the first. The engineers that are doing it have been with them for decades. They live for a challenge. They thrive on that challenge. The best thing you can do is tell them they can't do something. And then they do it. And then they do it. And they do it better than do, they exceed your expectations. They're so, here's the other thing. The things that you and I are talking about being profound. Yep. They've been preparing for. They're five years uh -huh. ahead of where we're standing right now. Uh -huh. They know what's happening. They're they're preparing for it. They're building for it as we speak. They're not surprised. Oh, they're not surprised by it. Right? Man. Uh, that, that Yeah, that's a job that would never be the same uh, very long. Right? Here's, here's the other thing that separates where we stand right here with skater boats. Yamaha outboards, right? This boat is built for this outboard. It was designed around this outboard. No other outboard. No other displacement in this outboard. Okay. It comes standard with this outboard. This boat is this package. What they've done with that is they know exactly how to tune this hull and this boat to this that motor, motor, that prop, that weight, right? Knowing that, Knowing what we've done in the battery compartment, Yamaha couples with and gives you another set of charging leads to add that fifth battery. Oh, 40% wow. yeah, more charging. Yeah, because they normally only come with two, right? It comes with two, it comes with two leads. One set, your starting right. Battery, okay. right? Now you got four leads with 40% more charging, so you can run two dedicated batteries, one for electronics, one for starting, and everything else, your pumps, your hydraulics, whatever you want. It's, well, that, that's neat that it's specifically designed and tuned with that specific engine. Yeah. And including the hull, which is, I mean, that's a lot of work. There's no wondering, do I have the right product? Right. right. Or, and you'll hear it. When you talk to boat owners, uh, you know, I wish my buddy has it with this motor. Yeah. I wish I would have got that one. With Skeeter owners, they know the boat was built. The motor was first. We, we built, built the, the boat. boat. Matched with that motor. We matched a boat to that engine. That's neat to see that that, that degree of, of thinking going into the boat. It's beautiful. All right. So let's talk just briefly about, you know, what's under here, what's in the front up there as far as storage. So once again, think about 10 years ago when a guy drove around with a box of frogs, right? Maybe some, some one box of soft plastics or a bag of soft yep. plastics, a couple of weights, maybe some jigs. Tackle storage was about this size, right? If, if that, yes. People drive around now with a full-blown tackle store. So when you look, and this is, I love this. I got a step nice right step here, up. Yep. right? If you look at the tackle storage oh. in a Skeeter boat, that's all a fleet farm. It's <laughs> literally, you can carry a tackle store in your boat. We've tried to incorporate the things he once again. Oh, a net. You can't take something out. I still got to have a net. Where was I going to put it? Well, let's build a net that fits so, in our system. Light. Comes with it. You're all lit up, right? You've got more rod tubes there if you wanted to do okay. some running yep. tubes. But these also come out. That's a crate. Right? Oh, I like they that. They come right out. So if I'm going somewhere and I want to take a couple of boxes out or I've got big bags I want to throw in here, I pop this one out, throw them in, right? It's, That's nice. We're constantly adapting to what the anglers are doing. If you think about tools, 
We all used yep. to have one rusty set of pliers riding around <laughs> in our boat. Now we've what you, got. What do you mean used to? <laughs> yeah. Now, heck, you got guys with hook sharpeners. You've got multi tools, right? Yep. Here's your tool platform. Literally, set them right, right there. Up there. They're right there, available Easy for access. everybody. Day box. I know what I'm doing when I get to the lake. Each right. lake might be different. Instead of having to open this every time and dig yep. through. I'll take this box and I'll load it up. Load it up. I might put the, you know, some bags of the soft plastics I know I'll be using nice that soap. day. A couple of hard yeah. baits. It's custom molded for the die jars, some terminal tackle. Throw it in there. And then uh, what's under this one then? This one can be used as dry storage or rod racks. So like in my okay. own personal setup, how yep. I do it. All my spinning rods go on this side. All my bait caster rods go on this side. Okay. I carry 29 to 30 bait casters and 18 to 20 spinning rods. Okay. Just depending on what I'm doing. Wow. And then I, uh, right down here is, I'm assuming just like a glove compartment kind of a. So you got a built in trash can here that's removable. <laughs> I always oh. use it for ice. I like it. I scoop up the ice at the hotel, bring it out, pour it in my yeah. cooler. This is a glove box if you went with a single console. Okay. If you went with a dual console, you'd have a full console with a with in with glove box dash. here. Okay. Man. Talk to us just a, for a minute here about the seats. The seats are flagship. They are. So silly things like, what are these? Well. Grab handles, handles get up and down. Yeah, right? I can see that. Or if I'm working, right? Here's my live well if I want to be in here working. But seats are twofold. One, they got to be comfortable. Yeah. Let's go back to the GMC. You use it, so. Let's go back to a GMC, a Denali. Yeah. Right? When you sit in a Denali seat, it's the captain's seat, right? It, it wraps yeah. around. It's a butt bucket. This seat, when I sit in it, it's like, oh. And when I've been standing up there working hard all day, there's nothing better than sitting back and, oh, here we go. But I'm six foot four. I need, if you look, I got lots of leg room. Yep. The boat comes standard with tilt yep. steering, okay. right? I run the hot foot throttle. Now both hands are on the steering wheel. Here's my trim. I got one for the jack plate, one for my motor trim. Okay. My graph is right here. It's everything that you have in your vehicle is sitting right, right here. here. And these seats, Man. What what's the one thing we have in fishing that we don't have inside our truck? Water, right? Yeah. There's nothing worse than sitting down in a soggy seat, zero. Zero, these things are 100% shed water. Well, that's I'll nice. never have a soggy butt. There's nothing oh. better. Yeah. Here, Man. even this, this is a third seat. And you right. look at it and you're like, well, I can't be comfortable. It, it's comfortable in some of the car seats I've sat in. Okay. But the other thing is, it's my nope. cooler, right? That's a pretty decent size. Oh, it goes quite a ways. And it's gel code lined. So okay. it's safe. It's it actually is a cooler. You've got uh step pad, your cup, cup holders. holders right there. A little thing that nobody notices. We all carry phones. Phones, right? Side pocket on both sides. Oh, right on the seat there. Yeah. Plus. Right? Okay, then and then back here you've got controls for... So this comes standard with a full dry dock system. So in, inside every one of these compartments is a fan. Oh, okay, so then it... Yeah. That's where you turn them on. Yeah, so you turn that on and it recirculates nice. air... To dry them out. To dry, keep them dry. So you're not yeah. getting that little bit of moisture and molding. I tell you what, Matt, what, what an amazing walkthrough on this boat. <laughs> Um, and especially amazing just to see where fishing has come, you know, in, 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 in 10 years and what's available on boats and talking about networking and, you know, I, it's, it's super, what an amazing boat. I'm so proud to work for a company that literally I feel like not only 
not only do they build a boat with my needs in mind, but they ask me what my needs are. I'm also so proud to work with a company that saw, once again, when I say they're five years ahead of right. us, saw what was happening with the world of electronics, and they've made standard Humminbird, Minn Kota, and Raptor, right? Tied them all together. That one boat network comes in the boat and I don't have to ask for it. I'm not paying extra for it, it's there. I, yeah. I mean this, five years from now, we're going to be standing at this show, and what we're talking about right now is being profound. Yep. Is going to be dinosaur. This. And that's, yeah. And, and I promise right you, five years from now, we'll be first on the scene and ready for it. Well, Matt, on that note, thank you so much for sharing your time with us, your knowledge. My pleasure. Congratulations on being Angler of the Year again. Thank you. Uh, what an amazing boat and company. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. Thank you.